The aftermath of an OU professor saying a racial slur during class, a fire in Dell City that could be seen all the way from here in Norman. And don't forget to buy flowers for your special someone this Valentine's Day. OU Nightly starts now. Hi, thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Lindsay Gibbs. And I'm Logan Morrow. Tonight we begin with the latest on the racism incident here at Gaylord College. OU Nightly has learned that the, that the professor who used a racial slur while speaking to students earlier this week will not be returning to that class. According to a statement by Gaylord College, Dr. Peter Gade has agreed that he needs to step down from teaching the capstone course and the rest for the rest of the semester. Excuse me. Dean Ed Kelly notified students and staff that Gade will meet one-on-one -on -one with OU's Office of Diversity and Inclusion. Other Gaylord faculty and staff will also receive sensitivity training. And in response to recent events, the OU chapter of the National Association of Black Journalists is actively working to make Gaylord a safe place for all students. President of the NABJ, Isaiah Irby, says this week has been challenging for him. He has been contacted by USA Today and the New York Times. In light of recent events, Irby is trying to turn this negative situation into a positive by working closely with faculty and staff. It's been personal and stressful, but it's also been a good opportunity to build upon things going forward. Irby couldn't go into much detail, but says what's to come will be immediate and impactful. And we've had another beautiful Friday, but you know, I think it was probably a little bit chillier than I like. It was chilly, but I'm glad we've been missing most of the bad weather. Okay. But Nash Rose has what's ahead for this weekend, Nash. Yeah, that's right, guys. You, you probably noticed you go outside today. It felt uh, a little bit cold, even though it looked very nice. Temperatures across the board are in the 40s for the most part. McAllister, the warmest of the bunch, at 49 degrees. But one thing that map doesn't tell you is the wind chill. When you factor in those winds, it feels much colder outside here in Oklahoma City. 41 degrees down here in Norman and Moore, also at 41. These numbers were in the lower 30s throughout much of today. So just something to consider when you're outside today. But looking ahead, we do have warm temperatures on the way. I'll let you know when that's going to arrive a weekend forecast and also we're tracking our next cold front sometime next week. I'll let you know when coming right up. All right, thank you, Nash. Two suspects located near the scene of the Creekside shooting Wednesday afternoon have been arrested. They have been identified as 18 year olds Ivan Lawrence Myers and Chloe Michaela Mosley. Both received charges of shooting with intent to kill and robbery with a firearm. This incident remains under investigation by the Norman Police Department. And a giant plume of smoke was visible even here in Norman this morning. But the fire wasn't in our town. Fire crews battled a blaze in Dell City at an auto salvage yard. Investigators say a worker cut, cutting sheet metal lit a cloth overhang on fire. The flame spread to the junked cars, got out of control, and could be seen across the Oklahoma City metro area. Looks to be at least 20 vehicles, possibly more, were involved. Uh, we did have some small explosions, whether it be uh, uh, gasoline tanks or uh, tires or whatever. Uh, we had assistance from Tinker Air Force Base Fire Department as well as Oklahoma City Fire Department. Uh, it took about 30 minutes to get a knockdown on the fire, produced a lot of smoke. Firefighters worked for about two hours to extinguish the fire and no one was injured. Right. Student of veterans are quite common on campus, and Logan, I see them all the time walking to class. For sure. Find out next who dropped in to make sure that these students are getting the necessities that they deserve. Plus, the verdict is in, and things aren't looking great for Avenatti. Next on OU Nightly. OU has the largest population of student veterans in the state, so making sure these students have access to necessary resources is essential. Secretary of Veterans Affairs General Ben Robinson met with Veteran Student Services and other administrators today to look over the programs and resources the university has in place for student veterans. He also took time to meet with a few of those students to discuss their lives and futures. Uh, really, I just, uh, number one is to volunteer my help. Uh, if OU needs things that I can help with, I want to be there to help them. 
Robinson says he also has high hopes for all Oklahoma Collegiate Veteran Centers to be top 10 in the nation and will do everything he can to get them there. Former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn may just get his way with the reopening of high-profile cases. Skylar Talal has that story and the rest of today's headlines. Skylar? That's right, Logan. Attorney General William Barr is re-examining several high-profile cases. Formal National Security Advisor Michael Flynn's case is among those being looked into. Flynn is hoping to get his case dismissed or be given the opportunity to change his plea. The re-examination could bring to light potential political motives behind actions of the Justice Department. U.S. Attorney Jeffrey Jensen of St. Louis is in charge of taking a second look at these sensitive cases. A federal jury in New York found attorney Michael Avenatti guilty on all three extortion-related related charges today. Prosecutors claimed Avenatti threatened to publicly accuse Nike of paying amateur players if they did not pay him millions of dollars. Avenatti is being charged with transmission of interstate communications with intent to extort, attempted extortion, and honest services wire fraud. He is still facing two charges in California for fraud and allegedly stealing his former client, Stormy Daniels, book advance. The Department of Justice is dropping the criminal investigation into former FBI Deputy, Deputy Director Andrew McCabe. McCabe will not be facing criminal charges for leaking information regarding his endorsement over the investigation of the Clinton Foundation back in 2016. Despite the outcome, McCabe is calling the investigation that took two years in absolute disgrace. He is also suing the Justice Department and FBI after he was fired last spring. And finally, the U.S. Court of Appeals today shot down the Trump administration's attempt to require low-income people to work in order to qualify for Medicaid. In a unanimous decision, the three-judge panel of the D.C. Circuit said the work rules went beyond what is allowed by law. Logan Lindsay, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Skylar. Next on OU Nightly, Valentine's Day isn't just busy for all those lovebirds out there. One of Norman's oldest flower shops is in high demand for this weekend. And Nash has the latest on your weekend weather. Nash, what's coming up? Yeah, you know, it's been feeling very nice outside, kind of getting a warming trend going. I'll let you know how long it's going to last coming right up. Welcome back to OU Nightly and what's really shaped up to be an incredible Valentine's Day afternoon. Here's a live look at downtown Oklahoma City where there's really not a cloud in the sky, which is completely different from what we saw earlier this morning. It was very cloudy. Temperatures were much colder than we have here. 45 degrees uh, is what it is out right now. But earlier this morning, we were below freezing and because of that, some places saw even a little bit of flurries. Here in the metro, we had a few right as the sun rose, but even earlier than that, further to our west, this is in Shattuck, Oklahoma, right on the border of the Texas Panhandle in Oklahoma. Got a little bit of snowfall there, but very little accumulation. Right now, though, we are in the 40s and really approaching the 50 degree mark here in McAllister, but Norman at 47 degrees. Tonight, though, if you have any plans for Valentine's Day, it's going to be very chilly. So go ahead and factor that in. The temperatures are up here. It's going to be, uh, it's going to feel like 37 degrees, and that's really the big mark you want to pay attention to, especially after 8 to 10 p.m., feeling like 30 degrees out once you factor in those winds. So you might want to wear a windbreaker, a jacket, especially if you're planning on going to downtown Oklahoma City for the art walk tonight. That is going to be outdoors and very cold, so plan accordingly. Now, tomorrow in Oklahoma City, a completely different story. We're going to warm up into the 60s. It's going to feel great outside, partly cloudy skies, and really not any precipitation to speak of as we continue a warming trend on into Sunday and even into Monday. Notice on Monday, we warm up to 68 degrees before dropping off with our next cold front on Tuesday. But guys, one thing I want you to pay very close attention to, Wednesday into Thursday, we drop down to 29 degrees, and we even have a chance of a wintry mix on that night. We could even see a small chance of snow. Now, it's pretty far out. We'll keep a close eye on it, but for more updates, stay tuned to OU Nightly's weather team, and we'll keep you posted as we learn more. Back to you two at the desk. All right, thanks, Nash. I'm pretty excited to see. We might have some snow next week. Hopefully. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> All right, act fast. With Valentine's Day in full bloom, one of Norman's oldest flower shops is working Hard to fulfill those last minute requests. Earl's Flowers and Gifts is seeing the full swing of Valentine's Day this week as they enter one of their busiest times of year. Store employee Tanya Wilson says that special accommodations have to be made to make sure that everything gets where it has to go. She also says that this is the only 
the first of many spring holidays and they expect the rush to continue till early May and the store has to bring in additional workers during the week. I think that's kind of crazy that they have to bring additional workers, but I am so excited to see all of the flowers this yes, spring. Yes, spring has officially sprung. Officially. Well, that's all the news that we have for you this afternoon, but stick around because all the sports that you've been asking for is next. Oh yeah, Logan, Sam Brown is here with a look at what's ahead. Sam, do you have any Valentine's plans tonight? <laughs> No, definitely not, but I do have some Friday afternoon plans, and if you don't, we've got you covered. On today's show, we'll talk about the dominant women's gym team, plus Parker and I give you our picks for NBA All-Star Weekend. Big Friday Sports is next. It's another Friday in Norman, Oklahoma, so get ready for the best 15 minutes of your week. He's Parker Thune, I'm Sam Brown, and this is Big Friday Sports. Parker, it's NBA All-Star Weekend, but we're opening today's show out on the Diamonds. That's right, Sam. The 2020 OU baseball team kicks off their season today in sunny Pensacola, Florida. Cade Cavalli gets the nod on the mound as the 16th-ranked Sooners will square off with number 25, Virginia. History favors Oklahoma. They've won nine of their last 11 season openers, and they bring back eight of nine positional starters from the 2019 squad. Switching over to the hardwood, the men's hoops team is riding a two-game win streak for the first time since early January, but keeping that alive will not be easy by any means. The Sooners have a brunch date at Allen Fieldhouse tomorrow against number three Kansas Jayhawks. Dang, aren't brunch dates the best? Oh yeah, I'm a neighborhood jam guy. Come on. In any case, Oklahoma kept it close with the Jayhawks when the two met in Norman last month. However, Kansas was without star point guard Devon Dotson, who leads the team in scoring. That was also the first of a nine-game win streak KU will carry into tomorrow's matchup. And after a brief road trip, the women's gym team is back in the Sooner State. They're set to host West Virginia and Texas Women's University tonight at the LNC. Sam, OU wiped the floor with TWU last weekend, but West Virginia should present a bit more of a challenge. And I think the ladies will happily accept that challenge. They haven't left the nation's top spot in over a year. Now with three gymnasts ranked in the top 20 of the all around, including Maggie Nichols at number one, should be same story, different week for the ladies. And now here's a taste of what else is on the Sooner schedule for this weekend. The wrestling team will look to snap a four contest losing streak tonight when they host Air Force. That's right, Quade Cummins and the men's golf team is spending the weekend in the Caribbean for the Puerto Rico Classic and the women's tennis team is hoping to serve up another L on Saturday against Pepperdine. Now uh, Parker, some, some reunions are just meant to be. You know, you have the Jonas Brothers, DeMarco Murray and Oklahoma football. The list, it just goes on and on. Well, hopefully nobody just heard you say some reunions are meant to be and decided to get back with their crazy ex on Valentine's Day. But I apologize staying on track, time. Meredith Mulkey takes us behind the former star running back's decision to return to his collegiate roots. It's a homecoming for OU legend DeMarco Murray as he returns to his old stomping grounds. And who better to coach next season's group of running backs than the former Sooner star who's been right in their shoes. After seven seasons in the NFL and a short broadcasting stint, Murray was ready to fulfill his dream of getting back to Owen Field. I knew at some point I wanted to get into coaching. Uh, that was my calling. I missed a game and, um, you know, what better place to obviously be here. And, um, you know, when I retired, you know, broadcasting was a step, but I, like I said, you know, coaching was, was somewhere in my future. Murray had immense success in his four years at Oklahoma, helping the Sooners win 43 games, three Big 12 championships, and a pair of bowl games. He owns OU career records for all-purpose yards with 6,718, career touchdowns scoring 65, and kickoff return average at 27.6 yards. But the former running back's success didn't stop there. Murray was selected by the Dallas Cowboys in the third round of the 2011 NFL Draft and dominated in the pros. He led the in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns in 2014 and was also named Offensive Player of the Year. Despite his standout season as a Cowboy, Murray headed to Philadelphia in his free agency where he played for a year before finishing out his career in two seasons as a Tennessee Titan. After his pro career, Murray stepped in front of the camera as an analyst with Fox Sports before getting his opportunity to coach at Arizona last year. But when the Oklahoma coaching job opened, Murray jumped on the opportunity to return to his alma mater, and Coach Riley knew he was the one for the job. When I first got the, the call and you know the opportunity to interview, I mean, I was extremely excited, um, nervous, and um, but excited, you know, just for the opportunity to obviously go in there and interview and um, hopefully, you know, have a chance to, to you know impress those guys. It's like with you know really good players. You a lot of times you just you can see it like right away. Like you just know. There's no doubt, and it's you could tell that with him as a coach. 
The Sooners have a fairly young running back group with exceptions of veterans Trey Sermon and Kennedy Brooks, so it'll be interesting to see how these guys develop under Murray in the 2020 season. And OU fans can get their first look at Murray and the rest of the Sooners April 18th in the annual spring game. Meredith Mulkey, Big Friday Sports. Counting down the days of the spring game, but when we return on Big Friday Sports, Steven Adams has a cannon. Yeah, that's Steven Adams. Plus, we've got an in-depth preview of NBA All-Star Weekend. Keep it right here on Big Friday Sports. Welcome back to OU Nightly. I want to show you something here pretty cool. This was spotted yesterday in Northern California, right on the border of Oregon and California, right above Mount Shasta. This is a lenticular cloud, also known as a saucer cloud. Some people back in the days even confused these as UFOs. Now, they're very rare. They only form under perfect conditions, typically above or around mountains. So we rarely ever see them here in Oklahoma. Now, speaking of things we rarely ever see this time of year, we've got warm temperatures in store starting on Saturday, moving into Sunday as we continue a warm trend to start the upcoming work week. But notice on Thursday, we do have a chance of wintry precipitation, so go ahead and plan for that next week. Guys? Thank you, Nash. The Oklahoma City Thunder entered the All-Star break, exceeding most expectations. Meanwhile, some guy named Zion, if you've never heard of that guy, he's had expectations put on him since he was a teenager. Yeah, you know, Sam, um, I, you would be well forgiven for mistaking Zion for a UFO. Yeah, yeah, he is. He is. Freakishly human. Now the two clashed last night and in the end experience overcame potential as OKC took down the New Orleans Pelicans. Zion had a night, 32 points in just 31 minutes, but it was the Italian stallion Danilo Gallinari who carried the thunder. He'd go for 29 points and how about Dennis Schroeder, the sixth man of the year candidate tallied 22 of his own as the thunder edged the Pels 123 to 118. A solid win for Oklahoma City, but the highlight of the night right here, easily Steven Adams from beyond half court at the buzzer to get into half, and he nails that shot. He couldn't have done it, though, without his teammate Chris Paul. That's right, Sam. Now let's take it back to last Sunday's game against Boston. Adams can hit the buzzer beater, and you look, take a look at Chris Paul telling him to throw it one-handed like a football player. And sure enough, Adams learned his lesson, threads the needle and extends the Thunder's lead going into halftime. The nice, rest nice form is history. You know, they might just throw this right into their playbook. Steven Adams from beyond half court with a baseball throw. Yeah, they, they might have to. <laughs> well, on to All-Star Weekend we go, Sam. It's time to take a look at all the weekend's festivities. Let's lock in our picks. So, skills Ooh, challenge. Right, My pick to win the event should be familiar here in Oklahoma. No I like Shea Gilgis-Alexander. Look, versatility wins this event. And SGA has proven to be one of the league's most versatile athletes. I think he gets it done. Not a bad pick. I'm going to go with Chris Middleton, guard for the Milwaukee Bucks. Everyone knows him as the second fiddle to Giannis on Tenacumpo, and for good reason. It is Giannis, after all. But he's got a unique, unique skill set of his own. He controls the pace of the game better than almost any player in the league, in my opinion. And he's a capable passer as well. Now let's move on to my personal favorite, the three-point contest. Sam, this one's fun every year. I was tempted to go with our boy Trey Young, but I'm actually going to take the best shooter you've never heard of, the pride of Newcastle, New Hampshire, a town for you, Duncan bro. Robinson. He's connecting from downtown at a clip of 44% this year. Six years ago, Sam, he was playing at Division Three Williams College. And tomorrow, I believe, he'll be crowned the best shooter on the planet. I think there's probably like five Williams' colleges in America to begin with. <laughs> you picked SGA in the last round, so I've got an Oklahoma star of my own. How about Buddy Heal? The sharpshooter from Sacramento has been one of the league's best from deep for the last few years, and he finished third in last year's competition. I think Buddy Heal comes out with something to prove and edges out defending champion Joe Harris to take it all. So I'm picking Buddy Love. Now let's go to Saturday's main event, the dunk contest. In the slam dunk contest, Sam, I got to go with Aaron Gordon. That dude can just jump out of the gym, and at six foot nine, two hundred thirty-five pounds, he's muscular and he throws it down with authority. Look, I know Pat Connaughton is the fan favorite, but come on, those of us that remember Gordon's epic 2016 clash with Zach Levine know that it's a matter of when, not if, he wins the dunk contest. I like your pick, but he's lost a lot of athleticism over the years, so I'm actually going to go with DJJ, Derrick Jones Jr. You could take any of his moments, his best highlights from a three-game stretch, and you'd make a killer and one mixtape. He's not known for much more than that, but as you can see by, like, by the highlight reel, he can dunk, and he's been getting ready for this contest for a while now. Regardless of who wins, if we get anything close to the showdown between Levine and Gordon, I'll be happy. In the All-Star game itself, Sam, give me Team Giannis. They've got Trey Young and Kemba Walker on the outside, plus two of the league's best interior players in Joel Embiid and Giannis himself. Not to mention, they've got emerging youngsters Donovan Mitchell and Bam Adebayo off the bench. You know, it's a close call, but Team Giannis has the slight edge in my eyes. 
you know, if you look at the rosters, this is practically an East versus West matchup, but I'm actually gonna roll, roll with Team LeBron in this one because of all the shooters. Just look at the roster. Harden, Kawhi, Luka, Tatum, Booker, I mean, the shooters galore. The king is going to spread the love amongst his people. I think he's going to take home the MVP award. Regardless, we're in for a fun week in Chi-Town, no doubt about it. And it's not often, actually, we get to talk soccer on this show, which for me is very exciting. And as a lifelong Chelsea fan, the story kind of made my day. Probably ruined the week of a Manchester City fan, though. UEFA handed the British club a two-year suspension from European competition earlier today. Man City will also be fined 30 million euros after committing, quote, serious breaches of the financial fair play regulations. Now, the biggest consequence is the ban from the Champions League, which the citizens have yet to win. The team announced in a statement that they will appeal the ban. And Sam, the Houston Astros cheating scandal continues to get uglier and uglier. I mean, that's an understatement. Check out this clip from their press conference yesterday in which owner Jim Crane gives us quite the head scratcher. <laughs> you know, our opinion is, uh, you know, that this didn't impact the game. Jim, when talking about the Yankees there, did you say you feel like this didn't impact the game? And what do you mean by that? I, I didn't say it didn't impact the game. You know, our opinion is, uh, you know, that this didn't impact the game. Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just, I don't, I give up. I give up on this guy. Well, I give we're up on the we're team. out of time to think about it. Look, this has been Big Friday Sports. Our opinion is that you should come back with us next week. Same time, same place. Unless you're Jim Crane, and in that case, you don't. Enjoy All-Star Weekend 2020.